I put the MG to work today. I want to show you, well, I want to try and sort out my uh, steering issue where steering, I've just driven to work and the steering needs quite a lot of effort put into it. Obviously, it's not power steered like you get on modern cars, but it shouldn't be this heavy. Um, that's good. One of the other issues which I think is related to it is the fact that the steering doesn't self center. Uh, now, let me show you what self centering is. Disconnected the steering column. There you go, you can see there. Disconnected, it's just the single pinch bolt, um, whatever size 11 mil is in Imperial. Now that it's all disconnected, the steering I can feel is very, very tight. So, yeah, it's definitely something up with the rack. And uh, to be honest, the steering column isn't that much better. I rotate it, it goes tight. There's loose, there's tight. So, and it's the same every time going round. Um, I do have a new column as well, so, oh, sorry. I have a replacement column. So I might put the replacement column in. I can't remember if I've left it here or if it's in the camper van. I think it's here. I'll have a fish around, I better sort out. So most of my bits are, under the bench there. I believe this is for a mini. Let's put it up. Casey's toolbox, sorry Casey. I believe this is from a mini, um, but like tie rods, everything are pretty much the same, although I've just noticed all of this is totally different. So I'm not gonna be able to use any of that. And here's my other steering column right by my marina gearbox. This one does look in a lot better condition. There we go. I'm definitely gonna put this in, I think, because <coughs> it's certainly be nice not to have that. The creaking noise is definitely coming from the column. Uh, I actually heard that um, when I was disconnecting I turned the steering, obviously, to uh, get access to the pinch bolt and you could hear creaking from the upper part of the column. So that is definitely going in. So to take the column out, obviously pinch bolt at the end like I've done. Uh, I think I've done it in one of my previous videos showing you. But up underneath the steering column you've got two bolts here, which are those two bolts there. And up either side, there's a bolt there and a bolt there. They're the ones we need to undo. We've obviously got to take, uh, is that a shear bolt? Oh, there's a shear bolt there we've got to take out. Or does it go on the other side? I'll find out when it comes out, but the ignition switch and everything's got to come off. The steering wheel on my one, this uh, motor liter one, I've got to take the screws out here. And then there's a big bolt in the middle and the whole hub will come off and the cowling there is attached by a couple i think i've only got one screw in mine also i don't know it's one or two i need to have a look but a couple of screws up under the cowling and then i'll show you how to do the indicator switch so the old steering column is out if i lie them side by side you can see this one's had some really dodgy welding on and if i'd known that i probably would have changed this long before so I'm going to end up with a hole in the bulkhead, so I'm going to have to order whatever that is, which is falling apart anyway. It's the grommet that goes through the footwell, and you can sort of just about make out the hole. Well, so the only thing I've got left to do is take the ignition barrel off, 
and I'll show you what I've done. They've got shear bolts, so the idea of these is um, when you tighten, they've got a hex head on them, and when you tighten them up, they snap off, so you know they're at the right torques end. This one I have drilled, and then I hammered in a chisel and then used a punch to undo it. I was hoping I'd have some bolts with the right thread, but I haven't. So before I go back in, I will use the grinder, just cut a little slot in there, wind it in with a flat head, and I will order some new screws so I can replace them with the right screws when I'm done. All I've got left to do is undo the other one, which I've already so you made a mark for the drill, sort of, sort of central. Um, and then new ones ready to rebuild and put back in. The other thing I will say is you can see where someone's painted here before. And uh, not done a great job. The new one's nice and shiny. This is the, if you have an impact, there's a shear bolt just in there, like a stud. Um, and that will shear and allow the column to come up so that, I think the theory is you don't have a steering wheel in your chest. Uh, I don't know how that works in practice, or if it works in practice, but hopefully I never need to find out. Right, here we go. This is the last one just coming out. A little bit fiddly. There we go. There's our steering column. You can see the actual steering lock itself just in there. So I'll put that to one side. That means that one is now drunk. Let's just see. That is actually really stiff to turn. Whereas that one you can see is so much easier. So I'm going to say that's probably a lot of the problem if not all of the problem. Uh, you can see in here, this is the hole that the uh, ignition barrel goes through and that cutout is what that should sit in. So first thing I've got to do then, is put that back on there. Here's the steering lock in, it actually works. You can see that's not, that actually does lock the steering. So columns back in, uh, I haven't tightened up the front end yet. I just wanted to show you this. So there's a little tab, little locating tab. There's also one that side, you can see it just there, uh, that the uh, indicator stalk sits in. And as you indicate, you can see this little tab is affected by that. And I'm not gonna be able to steer it annoyingly, but, um, as you come round, as you turn the steering, this little tab that's welded onto the column comes round, pushes up against that, and, well, cancels the indicators for you. That's the way it's supposed to work. Um, my one isn't actually original. I have replaced it, so it never worked on the old one. I don't know if that's because that column was, I don't know mismatch faulty you saw the state of it um or if it's because it's an aftermarket indicator stalk but that's the theory that's how it's supposed to work now uh, this is held on by the way with two phillips screws on there on there and then there is a plug now um i had an issue with the key as i put it back together um the key wouldn't turn, so I had to take it all apart again. And what happened was the little pin that sits in the steering column to lock it had come out too far. So watch that if you're gonna do this. Um, I have fixed it now. I see, still get my ignition. And it starts. So uh, happy with that. I've just got to, I'm now plugging this in. And then the steering column, this is, this is the bottom of the steering column and the cable for the uh, what indicator stalk sits in that groove in the back there uh, like that and then that will come up here like so and then this one you see this one's got four little threads in it I've only got one screw to hold mine in 
which I seem to be enough, and then that sits on top like that, sandwiches it together, and then the screw goes in through the holes at the bottom. Um, just want to show you the indicator self cancelling I was telling you about. You can see there, if we go that way, self cancels that way, which is uh, it's all good. But this feels so much so much lighter. Right, so I think where this has been poorly welded before, this is obviously going to put heat into the steering column, which is why this has got so tight. So I'm pretty sure. The problems I've been having with this steering is all to do with the column. Right, there we go.